Excellent. Colin, welcome. How you doing? I am doing great, Nick. Great to see you as well. Sam, likewise. Well, we're talking from um, two different parts of the Northern Hemisphere. I'm on Cape Cod, uh, and you're down in Costa Rica. I am down in Costa Rica with uh, one of our partners doing some uh, training with them. It's, uh, it's been fun. Awesome. Yeah, well, that's great. But, yeah, I was like, really? And there, there could be worse places to go to do training than Costa Rica. Oh, so, yeah, it doesn't get better than that. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Well, happy for you. And thanks for taking the time. And I'm actually so excited to have you on the podcast. So, um, yeah, because like what you're doing at, with at Sign is like really different. And so, and it has a lot of really great implications. So I want us to kind of dive into that. But before we do that, um, why don't you kind of share with everyone a little bit about like your career path and what kind of brought you to at sign. So a little bit about, you know, what you, what you've done for the last couple of years. So uh, when the last couple of years, uh, been focused on that sign. So we've been up and running for five years, but, uh, a lot of that was, uh, in stealth writing stuff. Um, my background is, uh, I'm, I'm a telco guy. I actually started my career in uh, British telecom. And uh, then uh, I, they wanted to make me a manager. That was never a good idea. So uh, I, I looked around for another job uh, outside of telco and uh, found myself working at a bank called First Boston Corporation, uh, yeah. which uh, turned into Credit Suisse. And I had uh, over a decade at Credit Suisse was an absolute joy. Uh, it, it was very mm. tough. I got all the toys to play with um, and really honed my skills in um sort of the branch of technology that really I'm passionate about, which is networking and network security. Um, yeah, so awesome. Did that there and then uh, jumped to Juniper Networks. Uh, went back to Deutsche Bank for a little while. So I was uh, running the innovation lab at Deutsche Bank. That's really where myself and uh, one of my co-founders had the idea for AdSign. So um, yeah, yeah that, we broke off and started doing it five years ago. Awesome. Well, so um, was it Credit Suisse or Deutsche that you met Andy Brown? Oh, Credit Suisse. Yeah, many, many years ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Andy and, Andy and I worked at Credit Suisse together and uh, uh, we had a, we had a blast and we um, we tried to predict the future. I think we did pretty good. Uh, we came up with something called Network Vision 2020 back in I don't know, 2007. And uh, we got to 2020 and we're like, yeah, we didn't do bad. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's like, trying to that, predict the future is difficult, but um, I, I, there was some there was some clues back then, and uh, yeah, so we just followed through on those clues. And I think that's that's really where sort of ad sign came from. That there's some clues right now as to where the future is going to be, and uh, yeah. I wanted to double down on that. So that's what we did. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, it's like that team uh, at Credit Suisse that Andy had was like, you know, just a bunch of all stars, you know, and so you can see that pedigree has, you know, uh, distributed, you know, throughout the industry and everybody's like done really great things. So, you know, um, hats off, you know, to uh, to you guys and, you know, when, when, you know, who worked on that team. So that's great. So then. All right. So then let's talk a little bit about kind of the problem space that you see uh, for at sign. Um, and then we'll kind of dive into at sign. So I was like a, a context about, okay, well, what, you know, what was the, you know, kind of the, uh, the, the big problem that you were seeing in the marketplace? Well, the, the, the aha moment was really uh, myself and Kevin, one of my co-founders uh, having an argument, all the best startups start up with an argument and uh, an argument over a cup of coffee is even better. And that's exactly what it was. And the, yeah. the observation was, um, and this is over a decade ago, the internet sort of sucks um, because every mm. new application you fire up, uh, every new website you go to, it asks for your information. Like, you know, well, what's your name? What's your address? Prove your email, prove your address, yeah. Uh, yeah. whatever it is. And then once you give them- Select your that, cookies. Yeah, select your cookies, do this, do that. Uh, it, it's just yeah. agony, right? I mean, it really is agony. And you end up typing the same information over and over again, and then you're spread out all over the internet. And if one of those bits of information changes, how the heck are you supposed to update all that stuff? I mean, mm, it's, no. if you've never moved house or you've uh, and had a credit card stolen, which happened to me recently, uh, and then it happened again, so two, two months on a row, trying to update all uh. those things is really difficult. And so the aha moment was what instead of like you logging into all these internet services, what about all those internet services logging into you? And what would that look like? Mm. And that was really, 
the birth of ad sign and you know kevin being kevin said you know um once once you've given up the, all that information then you're just you know you're just a number right you're you're not really anything other than a number in somebody's database um no. if it was your information then you'd have teeth right you'd actually be able to say you know well, you can't have that or you can have that and actually have some control of it so yeah. that was a decade ago uh we did try and write software we wrote software and it worked but i'm a telco guy it needs to scale to telco scale and mm. um we were missing some things so we put it to bed uh, and then uh, it reawoke five years ago uh, when huh. some things in the industry had changed that allowed you to do this sort of stuff. So. Yeah, you know, that happens all the time. You know, it's like you have a great idea and you're working on it, uh, but there are just gaps in the industry, the technology not developed, you know, or like structure of the industry, you know, like channels to market are just not there. And then all of a sudden they, right. they become available. So, yeah, and I totally get that. So, um, OK, well, that was that was actually that's really interesting, you know, because you're right. That is a pain. You know, um, and also like there is an upside though, you know, yep. uh, for like your your credit card information, you know, expiring. Like I, you know, personally, like I have a lot of like line clubs, and so yep. it's like I usually kind of let the let them expire when my credit card expires. You know, so it's yeah, like no, it's absolutely. you know it's a nice way to kind of just like put a time frame, you know, on that. You know, and if you really like it, you know, then you'll then you'll up it. But uh, but anyway, but no, but I totally. Yeah, we actually build that into the into the platform. Uh, we we uh, call it time to live. So you can share a bit of information and actually have a time to live on it. So you can have my credit card for the next I don't know, three months. And if the wine's good, then I might replace it. And if not, then it just evaporates on me. <laughs> so, yeah, so actually I having love, that I love... is really useful. Yeah, no, I, I, true. You know, it's like it puts control back into the consumer. Um, you know, yeah. love it. So so uh, all right. So so at scale. So when you said it kind of got resurrected, you know, like five years ago. So I'm kind of assuming that's what you're talking about right now with that scale. At yeah, sign. Exactly. At, yeah, at sign, at scale. Um, so the two things we were waiting for were we, uh, we originally used blockchain. It was you know, very much in vogue back in 2014. Um, yeah. And we used DNS, which is obviously still still very much in vogue. I don't think we're moving away from that. Um, mm. But yeah, if you've ever used DNS at scale, it gets pretty messy pretty quickly. And yeah. blockchain, uh, certainly at the time, was just too slow. You know, if you're doing an internet protocol, you know, it just wasn't right. Um, and that was those were the only tools we had because we couldn't cut keys at the edge. And um, and that sign, you know, is basically just uh, a unique string that you can own and a set of cryptographic keys that you cut at the edge. So you cut your own cryptographic keys. And yeah. uh, you know, over a decade ago, cutting cryptographic keys at the edge was you know, a difficult task. It, it's computationally mm -hmm. intensive. Um, fast forward to now, um, it's not that difficult to cut cryptographic keys at the edge, right? You can cut mm -hmm. RSA keys in less than a second, even on a SIM yeah. card. A SIM card can cut keys very quickly. Um, mm -hmm. And the other thing we wanted to do was um, move to a um, highly distributed in memory database rather than using DNS. And obviously in between time, that's exactly what many teams have done on the, uh, on the, uh, in the industry. Uh, we, we chose Redis, but it could have been any one of them. Um, and it means you can have a directory service that's highly scalable. So we had keys at the edge. Thank you to all the guys that have uh, been working on hardware acceleration on cutting cryptographic mm -hmm. keys at the edge. And we had Redis as a, as a directory uh which was you know infinitely scalable uh all we needed to do was create a new internet protocol um to join those ideas yeah. <laughs> that's all we had to do um, i know <laughs> yeah uh that was either brave or stupid um i i think probably a little bit of both um and that's what we did uh mm -hmm. we have written a new internet protocol that runs on top of all the good things that everybody knows and loves in network land. So yeah, yes, yeah. it runs on TCP. Yes, it runs on IP. Uh, yes, it uses TLS. Um, but on top of that, it's a protocol that can allow you to um, share information with another ad sign in a cryptographically safe manner. Um, and yeah. uh, that that's that's the core of the platform. Now, there's a whole bunch of use cases on top of that, which we can talk about. But the core of the platform is a way of getting uh, data from one place to the other, where you, the owner of the ad sign, own the life cycle of that data. 
Yeah. So I think, so one, great. Thank you for that. And so like, you know, the way that I'm kind of viewing this is that in essence, like, you know, from a, from a pure transport point of view, uh, kind of an at, the at sign, you know, packet payload yep. looks like just like any other application, you know, so yeah, there's like, you know, obviously there's, yep. Yep. yeah, it's like something. there's obviously there's no alteration to the, uh, any of the headers and TCP, no, you know, IP. everything's in so user just, space. Like, yep. Uh, yeah. Everything's in user space. You don't need to do kernel drivers. Everything. It's just another application. It's an application level protocol. Um, so yeah. it's not a protocol like an IP, you know, like IP. It runs on top of IP. Um, yeah. It's an application level protocol. Yeah. Okay, great. So, like in the purest sense of the word, it's an overlay uh, on top of the infrastructure, and it provides um, not only just kind of secure connection. It's you know it's encrypted you know on end to end, but it also can contain personal identifiable, you know, information. It's almost like the identity uh, of the individual, maybe the device, you know, that they have. Um, yep. I'm not sure if you also tie in the process that they're, that they're looking to uh, interact with, uh, yep. perhaps because that process may actually need um, some credentials and also may need some information, you know, for, for that particular, you know, transaction. Yep. So, so it seems to me really like what, you know, what that sign has built is almost like, you know, an alternative to zero trust, an overlay to existing infrastructure for zero trust. So where you now have identity based communications um, that connects, that kind of defines identity well beyond IP address, device, person, but now also includes a process um, yep. as well. And, and it and includes also personalized consumer information that is in the control of the consumer uh, as well. So, um, you know, that's what simply, so there's like this, you know, at sign overlay on top of um, either the internet in general, uh, or it could be hosted within a corporate network, you know, as well. Yeah, yeah, everything we've done is uh, hostable anywhere. Uh, you can run it standalone. Actually, one of our engineers um, has built uh, a Docker container that contains all the components all in a single Docker container. So talk about portable. Mm -hmm. If you want to run everything on a laptop while you're disconnected somewhere, uh, then you can develop and run everything, uh, everything locally. Um, mm -hmm. And you're right, it's, it's taking on zero trust, what I would call full zero trust, uh, from process to process uh, zero trust. And what we what we found pretty quickly was, you know, we, we built a, if you like, a control plane, if you want to sort of steal from the, the networking world, an end-to-end -end yeah. encrypted control plane uh, for any process to speak to any process in a cryptographically safe manner. Now, obviously, the control planes are not fast, right? They're not data planes. They're control planes. Mm -hmm. um, and it became pretty obvious that if we could use that control plane to get cryptographic keys in the right place to set up a TCP session, uh, then you could have a TCP session from anywhere to anywhere using you know, ephemeral throwaway keys and uh, have connections. And you know, obviously, I'm a network guy. Everything has to be outbound in that model, right? So yeah. if you could set up a rendezvous point for those TCP places, and the rendezvous point, although it acts as a TCP rendezvous, so it terminated and connected TCP sessions, but it didn't have the cryptographic keys, then yeah. you could have end-to-end -end encrypted TCP sessions uh, at wire speed. There's no reason why it can't be at wire speed uh, yeah. set up via the control plane. And that's exactly what we did with our product line called No Ports. On, um, so AdTime is the core platform, and No Ports yeah. is a application that runs on that core platform that allows you to have you know, essentially TCP sessions from anywhere to anywhere end-to-end um, -end encrypted. And I, I think that's that's where the networking world's going. You know, and, and, you know, zero trust network access isn't enough. We need to have full zero trust. Well, there's no ports open on the client or the server, and yet the client and the server can talk to each other end-to-end uh, -end encrypted across a, a hostile network. Yeah, that, that's that's great. You know, um, like super, super great. Totally get the, uh, the kind of the problem space and the solution space yeah. also that you, that you're that you're working in. You know, um, for those, and we'll talk about use cases in a second too. But when you have this kind of encrypted end to end um, 
kind of capability, let's put it that way, a uh, capability that, uh, that is that the user has control. Uh, what are the controls that are available to the infrastructure engineer? Yeah, that's a good, in I mean, managing that, that. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant question. So uh, the, uh, the classic way of doing this is have a policy layer. So uh, that's mm -hmm. exactly what we built. Um, so yeah. if you imagine an ad sign wants to be able to talk to a server and uh, I, I'm, I'm a Unix hack. So uh, let's say they want to go to uh, you know, SSH onto the server. Um, yeah. So using our technology, you can SSH to a machine that is on a 1918 address behind a NAT. And all you need to know is it's ad sign. Uh, and that server basically needs to you know, accept your ad sign as somebody that's allowed to connect. And yeah, that's fine. You can set it up with you know, files and or whatever. But what if that server is owned by somebody else, right? It's not yeah. my server, it's your server. Well, you as the infrastructure uh, person who is managing access needs to decide whether my ad sign, I can prove that my, uh, you know, I'm at Colin. Um, that's easy enough to prove, but am I allowed to access the server? Well, that should go off to a policy, um, like yeah. a policy. And that's essentially what we build. So you, you, you end up with human readable rules that are independent of IP addresses. Don't care about IP addresses anymore. It's an identity mm -hmm. rule. It basically says, you know, is at Colin allowed to log into at server? Yes or no. And yeah. that's what you can define in a policy. So. I spent many years on Wall Street you know, playing with IP uh, IP rule sets that are constantly moving. And yeah, it's it's a massive risk, massive, massive yeah. risk. Uh, just yeah. the fact that there's humans doing it is a risk. Uh, and then the fact that and, you know, IP addresses are you know, pretty fluid these days. Um, yeah. It's impossible to do that. But are they, if you have an identity-based human readable policies, I, I think you know, our lives in infrastructure are so much easier to deal with. So basically yeah. the rule set looks like this, you know, this ad sign can speak to this ad sign providing a service and am I allowed in or not? And um, yeah, you can obviously do that in a web UI pretty easily. Yeah, I love that. So so you have kind of policy engine um, kind of as the uh, arbitrator, you know, um, yeah. and and essentially like almost like a, I hate to use the word distributed firewall, but almost like a distributed firewall. Yeah, because no, it's like providing access, yes yeah. or no, right? You, um, it. you know, yeah. yeah, and so, so you have uh, within kind of the at, um, the um, you know at time stream you have identity um, that identity has to get exposed to the policy. You also yep. have where that you know uh, where that identity wants to gain access, and then whether right. that access is granted within the policy. Uh, everything yep. is encrypted, you know, as well. Yes. So then you get authentication. Um, yep. You get you know uh, access. You get authentication, then you get access, but you also have security around the encryption. Um, yeah, that's huge. You know, it's like, you know, you would think too then from a um, kind of a toil point of view from a infrastructure engineer that a lot of micro segmentation will go away. You know, the, the yeah. need to do a lot of segmentation and micro segmentation um, becomes much less than like in that yeah, kind of world. You, 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 yeah. So we've really focused with our use cases on the wide area network. Uh, but we're spa mm -hmm. you know, spa starting to speak to, uh, and we have you know, sort of you know, rendezvous points for these you know, TCP rendezvous points dotted around the world. Um, but it's not a huge leap to imagine, you know, we have DPUs now. Uh, mm -hmm. The DPUs, uh, certainly from uh, the AMD, uh, yeah. have uh, um, ARM processors. Uh, the ARM processor can deal with the handshake and then push down the, you know, the, the data uh, connection uh, into the DPU. So then in a data center, and this is, you know, this is futures at this point, um, mm -hmm. then you could have TCP end-to-end -end encrypted TCP connections from anywhere within your data center to anywhere in your data center of Y speed and mm -hmm. no ports open. No, nothing's listening. The only thing that's listening is the DPU that's going to authenticate the connection. And if it is, uh, if it's authenticated, then it just gets pushed to the DPU to do everything. And that's the way to do micro segmentation. It's not on a network layer. Yeah. It's not, uh, you know, on a TCP overlay. This is one TCP connection at a time. At a time. So yeah. That, that I think is the way, um, it's the way it should be done. It's um, the way it should be done. Great. Yeah. It's like Pico, uh, you know, it's a Pico level uh, segmentation and yeah. everything's identity and, level. 
Yeah, and I, you know, Colin, I'm so with you on this. So now, so if we think about now, now the user burden, yes. it doesn't seem to be much, you know. So it's like, well, like, oh. you know, that all they're really doing is that I would think that they have an agent, like you know, on their device yes. that that they basically interact with that you know allows them to you know choose particular um, criteria and credentials to identify yep. themselves, you know, with. Exactly. Um, yeah. That's a, a, a what, what's really interesting. We're actually doing some uh, some work in the privacy space, um, which you'll you'll see soon, um, mm -hmm. which uses uh, another sort of twist on this, which is you know, I, if I'm at Colin, you know, do you, do you trust me? And like, well, yeah, if we know each other like we do, then it's easy, right? I trust at Colin. Um, yeah. But if I, if you're introducing me to somebody else, you're essentially you're, you're testing that you know Colin's a good person, then they can come into your yeah. server. What if you could do that at a protocol level? And that's exactly what we can do. We can speak um, to a trusted third party and say, you know, should I trust this person? Uh, um, what's really interesting in the protocol as well is that given a question, depending on who's answering, I can give a different answer. And, and that's a whole different twist on uh, the way we can share information. Yeah. Um, so in terms of burden, uh, the burden is, you know, we, we all used to live in a castle and the, you know, and whatever the server was, whoever the server admin was, the person that looked after the castle, mm -hmm. uh, as we do to our own places, then we have to manage our own keys. And we've worked really hard to make that management of keys really, really easy. Uh, and the mm -hmm. industry is making it a much, much easier. So if you look at, um, you know, Android, uh, iOS, Apple, um, managing keys on a keychain, you know, using that same sort of uh, simile is uh, is pretty yeah. straightforward. Right? It just happens Very, yeah. from from a user perspective. It's totally, uh, totally straightforward. It took me a while to trust it, you know, but like I do now, you know, and yeah. uh, hopefully I'll continue to trust it. You know, it's like the only time you lose trust is like when something bad goes wrong, <laughs> when something yeah, bad yeah, happens. Exactly. You know, yeah, it's, it's like that's always an arms like, race. But uh, yeah, yeah, having having, having to manage keys. Um, is uh, the only the only burden, and if, uh, frankly, the, the other option of like having somebody else manage your keys means that that somebody else can see your data. And I think, yeah, we don't want to do that anymore. Now, maybe five years yeah. ago when we started, uh, the company, like many people were saying, "Well, yeah, privacy's over, right? Everybody can see everyone on my data." I, I think the tide's turned on mm -hmm. that argument. Yeah, that pendulum has swung. You know, um, it's swinging back pretty hard. Um, yeah. Okay, great. So um, let's talk a little bit about. So okay, great. I got like you know I have the whole at sign um, overlay. Yep. I have kind of the policy uh, engine. Um, yep. So how does this get built? Like who builds it? You know, it's like how do like and let's think kind of maybe a scenario. One is that uh, private company. Let's say go back to like one of your you know yep. financials, whether it's Credit Suisse or or Deutsche. Um, Okay, how would you implement that? You know, in those environments. So uh, let's start with a uh, you know a, a real simple use case uh, of uh, you know, remote machines. So in my, mm -hmm. my old world of uh, at Deutsche, um, you know, ATMs in Germany, right? So how do you get to ATMs? Well, you know, that these days, uh, you know, they may be internet connected, there may be VPNs, there may be private lease circuits. It's complicated, and yeah. with complexity comes risk, right? So. Uh, with that sign, essentially all you need is um, you know, access to the internet outbound only. Um, so you can have my favorite rule set, which is deny all inbound. Um, so you don't even yeah. have to answer ICMP. You're essentially cloaked on the network. Um, you run a small bit of software on that remote device. Um, and then you can send messages to it um, to get remote access. And, and that's how many of our customers start uh, be able to get remote access to devices that are in the field, you know, whether it's uh, um, sensors in the IoT world or you know, uh, remote public devices, maybe something that's roaming and you don't know what the IP address is, maybe it's on cellular or maybe it's got backup. Um, and all that stuff gets complicated at network level very, very quickly. And you can make yeah. all that pain disappear because all you need to do is address the ad sign and get remote access. You know, maybe it's SSH, maybe it's a web interface, doesn't really matter. As long as it's getting TCP, you'll be able to get to it. And yet 
your exposure to that uh, hostile network is effectively zero. There's nothing open, yeah. nothing listening, and, uh, and, and everything's independent of the underlying infrastructure. You still gonna have IP connectivity for sure, um, but there's there's nothing to attack, and there's no better situation than having nothing to attack. So that is true. Opinion, so aren't that, that's I mean in my old world, yeah, I used to run the DMZs at Credit Suisse. Um, I would deploy this in my DMZs because. There's, yeah, there's nothing much more hostile than a DMZ environment and uh, having no ports open in a DMZ and yet me as administrator can get logged in. That's that's a beautiful yeah. thing. Yeah, great. Okay, so, and that's basically an agent that runs on a device. Yes, so, yeah, uh, it's, so it's, it's okay. an agent, yep, yep. Okay, great. Uh, so then- I will, I will tell you, yeah, people have asked me like, what, why should I trust you? Um, and that's a very good question. Uh, number one, everything we do is open source. So you can literally look at the code and everything we do is, um, tested against a third party set of rules of, um, you know, how good are we doing, uh, in, in terms of how we managing our software and we use open SSF and we have mm -hmm. public score cards against our open source code. So, um, yeah, you can trust us or you can look at the code or look at our scorecards. Okay. All right. Perfect. Well, yeah, like trust is always earned, you know, but like, I think, um, but you want to like go into it knowing that you have a couple of trust data points, you know, and those, 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 those are good data points, you know, to have. Okay, great. That's, those are like on the endpoints on this remote access use yes. uh, case. But then I think also you're going to need, you know, agents on various different servers that are allowed uh, to have connections with those devices, you know, as well. And then Correct. there's a policy engine um, within Correct. you know this structure too. Yeah, everything everything's addressed by at sign, so you can have the policy engine anywhere, um, and that that's again a, a nice, a, a joyous thing. So no stretch VLANs. Um, don't have to yeah. do that anymore. You can uh, put the policy server wherever, and if that infrastructure dies down, then fire it up somewhere else. It will automatically find where the policy server is. Everything's addressed by at sign. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah, that that's essentially it. Um, the hmm. uh, the uh, the client side um, essentially is you know, just a um, an application that needs needs to be run to be able to you know, speak to the protocol and get your TCP sessions up, um, and then you speak to local host because you've got no ports open. You actually speak to local yeah. host. It magically pops hmm. out at the other end uh, on local host. So all the communication is actually done local host to local host. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Uh, and you guys and your agent, you've kind of written to like the um, the AMD DPUs, and so like um, they can kind of crack open what you uh, what you've done, check the policy, and then uh, allow the you know, connection yeah, they, to go forward. So that's what we're working on. Uh, we're not we haven't got any of the, that working in the data center space. We've really worked on the wide area networks uh, for the moment. So, mm -hmm. okay. um, but yeah, the, in, in in the future. Um, it's a sort of natural progression. Uh, just the rendezvous points at the moment are generally written in software, and uh, yeah, yeah, I mean that's that's good enough for most use cases. Up to you know several gigabits of traffic, but if you want to run hundreds of uh, gigabits of traffic, uh, then we're going to need you know Silicon Assist. Um, so for sure, uh, yeah, I'm really really looking forward to speak to a number of players in the market to uh, make that happen. Okay, great. Well, you know, at the um, at the AI networking summit, Sony is going to be there. So, uh, you know, make sure like you know you connect up with Sony. <laughs> All right. So, um, and let's see. So, any other use case that you want to describe? So, we did the remote access one use case. What else are you saying? Like a lot of folks uh, wanted to deploy this. Remote access is a perfect use case for this for sure. Yeah. But, so, uh, I mean, there's there's many there's probably many more use cases than I can imagine. But uh, another very uh, one that's used a lot is you had to do large file transfers between uh, point A and point B. Um, mm. So we have a, a number of people using um, using our software to do exactly that and be independent of the underlying network uh, infrastructure. So that be, that's been used for you know getting firmware images out to IoT devices. Um, it's also used uh, being used to get um, scan data uh, in hospitals or one hospital to another. Um, again, often in those use cases, uh, especially when you talk to uh, uh, banks and uh, medical, um, trying to get a port open uh, can take nine months. 
Mm, for sure. Yeah. Um, and with our, using our infrastructure, there are no inbound ports open at either end. Um, mm. So if you're in one of those places, it's really, a, you know, it, it's, it's a time to market, I uh, think, that we're actually solving. The technology is you know, one thing, but actually getting a solution um, into those environments uh, quickly is often you know, a, a case of either winning or losing a deal, right? So time to value well, is really, really important. Yeah, well, I think that, that's a great use case. I would think, I'm not sure if you've seen this at all, but like kind of consortium, you know, um, companies, you know, whether it's a hospital and all the doctors that are associated, you know, around that cluster, that those are complicated, you know, environments. And so having an overlay where you have this really kind of zero trust, you know, infrastructure couldn't put in place, you know, thank you at sign to, for doing that. Um, you know, or, you know, whether it's a, a bank and their supply chain um, and their partners um, um, or or any other kind of consortium of companies that are connected together through cross architecture for either product development or cross architecture for product delivery, you know, as well. So I would think that's another really great, you know, use case. I'm oh, yeah, not sure if you're sure. seeing that. You know? Yeah, we're, we're seeing all, all over everything. Everything we've done, uh, we actually use our own SDK. The SDK is open to other people. Um, so we use our SDK and other people can use their SDK, come up with their own use cases. Uh, one of my favorite ones, because we, we started in the uh, world of uh, blockchain and uh, you know, couldn't use it, wanted to use it to uh, any number of reasons, but mainly it was uh, speed. Um, actually, one entrepreneur picked up our, um, our SDK and has written a blockchain using a protocol that runs on a mobile phone. So you can have uh, uh, personal blockchains between uh, you know, X number of players, and you actually mm. can run the blockchain on a mobile phone. So it's the first blockchain that I know of that huh. is private and runs on a, on a mobile phone. And he was demonstrating um, instant messaging using blockchain, and then obviously it's our infrastructure underneath. Um, so it's always a good sign when you can see your protocol being used by other protocols. I mean, back in the day, yeah, for when sure. I, I saw, uh, I mean, I, I started you know, in this industry when uh, IP ran over phone lines, uh, over modems. Mm. Uh, I'm sure yeah. you remember that as well. I do. Uh, I remember that but yeah, as well, Carl. Yeah. I was there. <laughs> but but, but yeah. when that flipped over, so you were actually running uh, voice mm. over IP, uh, like th there's something going on. And now when I yeah. can see you know, our protocol being used as the underlying infrastructure for a very fast and very lightweight blockchain, it, 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 it's very telling. And uh, yeah, yeah, huge kudos to uh, the our crypto team that uh, put that together. Uh, it's very cool to see. Yeah, awesome. Well, well congrats you know, on that. Um, there's um, um, AI play, you know, yes. um, you know, in here. So, um, I would think the AI play is probably going to be the most, you know, we can see in a couple of different areas, like, but one is around the policy engine uh, and the yep. other is maybe around kind of connection management, you know, so, um, but I don't know, I'll let, I'll let you speak to it. So, um, you know, where have you been thinking, what kind of AI um, yeah. and, you know, and where? So I, I think when we, when we started the company, we always talked about what we called uh, people, entities and things needing a, uh, an identifier on the internet. And uh, obviously, things is the IoT space, uh, yeah. entity, you know, people is people, but entities gets really interesting. So it's companies and it's yeah. AI. And it's even more prevalent now that if you have an AI that can do really good stuff with, uh, with you know, real time data, getting that data there and making sure it's the right data, obviously, we can help with that. Um, and that's sort of you know, state of the art now. But yeah. If you want that AI to act on something, can you imagine telling the AI how to configure a network and which packet to send it to and all the rest of it? That sounds no. a nightmare. But if you just said, you know, um, you know, I know, it, it's a it's a security camera and it recognizes you and it opens the gate. What if it just says, you know, at gate open? That's mm. a whole lot easier to do yeah. mashups between AI and the real world and offering that cryptographically safe um, way of uh, you know, interacting with the wor real world, I think, is where it gets exciting. At the, most, at the mo moment, most people are worried about, you know, is that data feed coming from a place where I, you know, I trust? And obviously, we can help yeah. with that. Uh, but when AI is interacting with the real world, um, removing 
the complexities of the I, uh, yeah, the IP network and just having a cryptographically safe endpoint to talk to, and they can uh, mutually uh, mutually authenticate each other and then act on it, then I think that changes our whole world. Uh, so you can have really interesting yeah. use cases of you know, my AI, AI talking to your AI and then yeah. talking to Starbucks and ordering up my coffee and me paying for it. Um, trying to do that in an IP only world is very difficult, but if you've got, you know, speaking to at Starbucks and at coffee machine and at, you know, all of a sudden those use cases become easy to do and independent of the infrastructure. That's right. You know, I didn't see that one coming. Um, you know, so I was thinking more, you know, um, you know, more about, okay, um, the assist in creating policy and, um, and monitoring sure. those policies and changing those policies yep. based upon input. Um, I didn't see it as another user of that sign, uh, it being I, AI. So yeah, kind yeah. Of like, a, yeah. yeah. So it's like you have, um, you know, especially in, you know, it's like there has been a lot of chatter where well, the beginnings of chatter of like, you know, AI agents um, being able to do things for you on behalf of you, you know, so it's like, oh, I need a pair of blue jeans, you know, find me the best price and have it shipped to me, you know, or whatever, you know, so it's like, and spawn that off, you know, um, and, and then all of a sudden, like, you know, two days later, you get like a pair of jeans that show up like, you know, at your doorstep. And I think that's kind of a little bit like, you know, of, of what you're talking about, you know, it's like, um, you know, being able to um, communicate intent um, to an AI agent and then having it fulfill that intent. Um, and which means there could be a, a range of um, other AIs that it needs to talk to in order to fulfill that intent. Um, exactly. And so that's a whole other, that's kind of just another kind of layer of applications on top of, you know, what we already um, engage with, you know, on the on the internet and our digital lives on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, that's really interesting, you know? So it's like, just make all of those transactions super secure. And I would think also too, so this is, you know, maybe a little bit orthogonal, you know, but I would think there's also a logging component, you know, to this. Oh, so, 100%. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it's so like, we, you know. We get lots of requests for, uh, you know, I, I, there was this policy thing, you know, how can I log it? How can I have end-to-end -end encrypted logging? How can I pass it to, uh, you know, a, a, maybe an AI system to you know, look for anomalies? Um, all, yeah, all and stuff. compliance regulation, you know, basically, yeah. am I compliant yeah. to regulation? Yeah, so all, you know, doing all of that, you know, stuff. Yeah. This is, um, well, I'll tell you, Colin, you know, this has been really great. Like, you know, just really understanding I at sign at a much deeper level, you know, than I have before. Um, it's, I think, you know, I think when you guys talk about the company, I, I think I got kind of focused in on the, the building of the protocols and yep. the analogy to like DNS and how it, how it works and so forth. And really, so that kind of made me drill down onto those parts of the discussion. But what's really interesting is, you know, is that, yeah, this is kind of a, this is a way of probably the way that we should all be doing zero trust. Um, and then all of the benefits that are associated with that, especially around, uh, infrastructure management and micro segmentation and the management of that micro segmentation. I think that in itself is just huge. It's massive. Um, and that's, you know, a great, I think a great way to kind of communicate the value that that sign is actually delivering to the marketplace. It's an overlay uh, that enables zero trust. It gives control back to the consumer um, and the corporate and the corporation. Um, and it enables, you know, these uh, connections to occur in a secure, uh, in a secure fashion. So you don't have to be segmenting the heck out of your, your network and building multiple VLANs and having lots of different, uh, policies within firewalls and so forth. It's, um, it really looks like a toil reduction on the infrastructure engineers, you know, behalf and then also a better user experience, uh, as well and setting it up for, you know, letting, you know, having an infrastructure ready that can move as fast as kind of these AI networks and workloads uh, are developed you know, as well. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, you still got to understand what ha is happening on the IP, uh, IP world, but uh, yeah. abstract some of those things away, uh, I think makes it easier for everybody. And you know, more importantly, makes it secure. 
right? So yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Build, build the zero trust, identity networking, uh, and yet not holding you back. So you've got you know, you've got this what used to be you know, two edges of the same sword. Uh, you can have you can innovate and and be secure, right? Innovation without yeah. the risk. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. We have uh, Vince Cerf, uh recorded an intro for the AI yeah. Networking Summit. Um, so I just saw it the other day and he spends um, a good amount of time. So we, and we asked him, okay, well, um, what is the impact of AI on, on infrastructure, you know, especially on internet infrastructure? And so he talked about, you know, the, the build out of the internet and the things that we got wrong. You know, obviously we didn't pay enough attention to security um, as we we're like scaling this out. Um, and then, and now in terms of, um, uh, of AI, we're smarter. And I think what he's, what he's now starting to postulate is that the infrastructure needs to be the place where, um, kind of digital signatures, identity, uh, is held and done. A lot of the stuff that we just, you know, we were just talking about, you know, uh, as well. He has this other, you know, really interesting, um, perspective. And it's almost like when you hear it, you say, Oh, of course. But it didn't come to me until he said it, you know, and it's like the Internet itself was really built, as we all know, for the dissemination and distribution of information. And really what AI is being built for is all about content creation um, right. and then authenticating that content, um, meaning like who's, you know, is it, you know, is this really me speaking or is this kind of an AI, you know, kind of, um, you know, projection, you know, of me doing this interview, you know, with you, Colin. So it's like, how do we authenticate the um, authentic, the authenticity or how do we authenticate um, the originality, you know, yeah. of that, uh, of that piece of content? And so, so we've had the, the internet was put in place and then content started to grow and started to populate it and we had to expand it. Now we have this massive, massive, you know, engine of content creation that is just going to like flood the pipes. So we should um, see in the next couple of years a, you know, a massive increase in the size and the breadth and the scale uh, of Internet, um, of the Internet infrastructure just to support all this, um, all this AI capabilities. So yeah, I, maybe one. I, go ahead. I was going to say, um, right at the beginning of the company, we, we were lucky enough uh, to uh, be with Vin, and uh, he gave us some challenges. Um, and uh, they basically around uh, they they also got around about one word, which was accountability. You know, how do you mm. have accountability on the internet? Uh, so he gave us some challenges, um, and it took us almost two and a half years to actually solve some of those challenges. I mean, I mean, I guess you get challenged with Vin Surf is going to be a tough one. Uh, and we did uh, mm -hmm. drop him a note and said, um, yeah, we think we solved it. And he gave us some time. And uh, I think we, we passed it muster. Uh, apart from one, yeah. uh, and the one thing that uh, Vin didn't like was uh, you can have emojis in your ad sign. So you could be uh, <laughs> uh, at guitar day. And uh, Vin was worried about the emojis. So we've kept it to a few emojis, a limited set of emojis and uh, Latin characters at the moment. And obviously, you know, this, Harks back to DNS, right? You can, uh, the human eye is not uh, perfect and can see certain characters uh, as other different characters if you have a larger, larger, larger set. Mm -hmm. uh, but Vint has definitely been um, and continues to be um, this uh, grandfather of the internet, but still, still comes up with really, really good challenges. No, oh, yeah, and it's like you know, it's like he's, he's always just so great to talk to. You know, it's like oh, you amazing. always learn something. Yeah, you always learn oh, something great. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, Colin, um, maybe one uh, final question. Let me get your take. Vision for our industry over the next three to five years. Where do you see we going? That's going. So, I mean, I, I've got skin in this game. Uh, I think we're moving to solve some of those uh, challenges that have been set out to, you know, for us to solve uh, five years back, uh, which is about accountability. And accountability comes mm -hmm. with identity. So, identity based networks and cryptographically safe communication with verifiable proven identities at either end uh, is where we're going to be. Um, I don't think, um, I don't think we're going to remove any network engineers. We were still going to be highly dependent on network engineers running the IP network, uh, but we will need um, 
engineers that can go full stack um, all the way up. And the stack at the high end is going very high at this point. Um, so mm -hmm. we need other layers of abstraction. And that's the that's the niche that AdSign um, with our you know, open source and uh, open protocol hopes to um, achieve is to allow innovation to continue without increasing risk. And I, I worry seriously about the risk side of things and making sure that everything's cryptographically safe uh, because nobody wants to use a network that's not safe. Um, so we have to solve, we have to solve those things. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, if, if people are interested, then they should uh, you know, join up. Everything's open source. You can uh, join in and uh, we'd, we'd love to have you there, but it, that's, that's the challenge for the industry is making sure that people feel safe using the internet. Otherwise it will get fragmented and that yeah. will be, that will be horrible. I mean, that, I don't yeah. want to live in that world, right? I, I don't want to live in a fragmented network world. Yeah. That's why, um, that's why the podcast, you know, um, kind of trust, build trust and infrastructure, you know, build yep. trust. Yep. So awesome. Colin, this was like so much fun. I really had a great time, you know, chatting with you. Me too. I learned a lot about at sign, you know, as well. And I hope everybody else did too, who's plugged in and listened to like uh, this podcast. So Colin, I just want to thank you for the time. Uh, hope you're getting some downtime there in Costa Rica, you know, as well. Yeah. You know, uh, but, uh, no downtime for me, but I love every moment. I'm, I'm living my dream, Nick. So, uh, oh, thanks, how awesome. Thanks yeah. <laughs> thanks, Colin. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for plugging in.